I have two things I'd like to say. The first is it's very hard to get an idea of 75,000 people arriving on a small town. I don't think New York or London or Paris could have managed 75,000 people, but they did, and it's a minor miracle or a huge miracle. And the second thing is, is how people have to try to adapt after being displaced. You have to consider living in your own home, in your own existence and community happily, and all of a sudden you have to flee all your possessions left behind, all your memories. Then you come to a, another city or town and you may have to sleep 20 people in a room. And that's very, very difficult. And once I started to visit uh, IDP families, I got a good sense of what it is like to live in these conditions because you've got kids running around, probably got four different generations of families. Uh, People are trying to work, uh, but as you can imagine, uh, the Kurdistan economy is, is at an all-time low, uh, with most government employees getting 25% of the salaries. If you think that includes a doctor, it should give you an idea how difficult it is for people without certain qualifications to come to another city and find employment. So the, the hardest thing, I think, is the uncertainty. Uh, where is the next dollar going to come from? At the moment, the aid is provided by Aid to Chechny, Knights of Columbus and other aid, Catholic agencies around the world. That cannot continue forever. Uh, however, the fall of Mosul is yet to come. And then after the fall of Mosul, people need to understand what has happened to people of Mosul. But then after that, you have to get uh, restructuring and then rebuilding these towns and their infrastructure and that is not going to happen in the next year or year and a half. In certain places like Telescoff that started to happen with 250 families but I think for the Syriacs uh, there were 6,000 families in Karakosh. Half of those have now flown, fl have, have gone to other parts of the world and Karakosh people are mainly used to living with 90% Christians and so what's going to happen if 3,000 families return then they may be living with 3,000 Muslim families and they have lost all trust in the Muslims from what happened in August 2014. The, so I see that as um, a, a key problem, what, what do you do with your family? They're here, do you return them to Karakosh or do you wait to get aid from an NGO and go to America, Lebanon, Jordan or, or Germany or France? I think from Alkosh and Telescoff, where the Peshmerga is directly involved, that is fine. But with Places like Karakosh, Karmales, Bartella, there are three eyes on it. The eyes of Kurdistan, the eyes of Iran, and the eyes of Iraq. And it, there's huge uncertainty. That can't be sold in a few months. And then they've got the various militias. Um, at the moment, you can't go into Karakosh because there's, uh, it's unsafe. So. It definitely needs a peacekeeping force, but that would mean that Europe or America would need to start really thinking seriously about this and what they can do. But having seen how things progress in Europe, um, I have no idea about the Trump, uh, new Trump administration. I can't see anything happening quickly. And But what people here want, they want uh, solutions to when they can go back home because soon they won't be able to, if we lose sponsors for the rent, then how will they afford the, uh, the houses that they currently live in, which are more or less 100% funded by donations. Yeah, when I visit Batnaya, you, you get a real insight into the hatred 
deep hatred that ISIS has for the Christian community. The, they wanted to destroy everything. The desecration in the church was unimaginable. Uh, so I think if you have a home and you've lost your home and then you come back to your home and you've seen it burned, desecrated, it's another deep wound to a already wounded soul. And, and that's why they, they will not return unless they get security, because they don't want to have this happen to them again. Because you have to bear in mind that these communities are families, large families, and they have to protect their families. So why would you want to bring back a family again to have the suffering that they've had since 2014? I think as Catholics we need to take up our real responsibility in life. We can't be true Catholics and let what is happening here in Iraq happen. I, when, I had no real idea until I came here to see what was going on. And I think as Catholics, uh, support agencies like A to the Church in Need, because they really understand what is going on out here. But to lobby your local MPs, uh, or lobby a local senator and because you, what you're losing here is something that history will tell us how, how did it happen because since the fall of the Ottoman Empire in the 20s Christianity is, is more or less being wiped out of uh, the Middle East here we have a small enclave in Ankara with a couple of hundred thousand people left and we need to help these people stay and it's going to need you to dig deep into your pockets, needs you to have a voice. But if you are true Christians, then you need to say something. Because this is a r tragedy. Uh, I, you have to... These communities were uh, re biblical, and they really lived the faith of Jesus. And now it's about to be wiped out, and we should not let that happen. I think you have to think about your own community and think that you had to flee it and that when can I return to it, when can I return to my job, when can my children return to their education. Children here being educated, uh, let's say at the Catholic University of Erbil, the only time that they can do the homework or prep is between 12 and 3 o'clock in the morning because when they go back to the house you have four families living there and it's chaotic. It's a loving chaos, but how can you study? And they study in their bedroom. So you have to think what it's like to be displaced. Think of all the things that you are losing. Uh, that would give you a very good idea of what these people are suffering on a daily basis. And lastly, the uncertainty. People here were more than disappointed with Obama because he did nothing. Uh, so the view of Obama was terrible. I think people here are feeling excited about Trump, that he will do something. He has stated in his uh, election speech that he would do something about Daesh. That's an indication that he'll go further and help the minorities in Iraq to, to get back their lives, to lead a normal life, that we're all leading in the West. We might complain about not having enough money to buy a meal, but that's not what life's about. They, have, they are really suffering on a daily basis, but it's also huge mental suffering. The trauma, the stories I've heard about fleeing Karakosh, fleeing Batella, fleeing your homes, leaving everything behind, and then people going into those houses, desecrating them, burning them, and the uncertainty of the future. What is my future? Well, if Trump cannot give them hope, then what hope is there? It's a difficult question because I come from a culture which is politically correct. We can't say what we feel. But having been out here, I've seen a hatred that I've not seen before. And I'm with Christians who've lived that hatred and still see that hatred going on. So as the head of the church, in the Vatican, the, of, the, of the faithful, then I think the Vatican needs to be, obviously has to be politically 
delicate in what it says, but it needs to come out and say, tell the truth. And the truth is here, that the Christians are being terrorized away from their homes and their lives, and it must stop. We must have reconciliation, and it must come from all sides. It must come from the Imams, and it must come from the Catholic, Christian, Catholic and Christian churches. It's no, we can't just let it happen. People have to stand up and have a voice and say, enough is enough for the people here. And we must save Christianity in this part of the world. As Catholics, we really need to pray and pray hard. Thank you.